Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you some really nice projects and a gift bag, which I think you're really going to like, using this lovely uh, stamp and die set by Craftwork Cards. So this is the Grand Floral Rose Collection. Now this is a layered stamp rose. So basically you have your base, then your kind of detail, and then your outline. Now they can be quite tricky sometimes to line up and things like that, but I've got a few techniques that I think will help some of you because I know I've had people in the past and I've read on forums where people kind of struggle with this. So yeah, hopefully this will help you, but it's really nice. So I've got to choose this one and I've also got this one here. So there will be a tutorial coming later on with this one, but for today we're gonna to focus on this one here. So you get the die that cuts your actual rose and then you've got a leaf die and the smaller rows here and then you get this tag okay so what I've done so far is I've made this tag using that one there and then that's the happy birthday stamp along with that rose and the leaves okay so this is just a really nice little gift tag that I've made and then I die cut it again stuck it on the back and it just makes it really strong I put a little white eyelet there finished it off with some ribbon and a little bow there with some baker's twine so it's really really cute nice to make easy then I've done another one just because I wanted to use another die that I had. This is my own stash, this tag die. But um, again, just using it with that kind of stamped on and again with that rose detail at the bottom. This leaf here is from my own stash. It's kind of my, my go-to, but I just thought it looked quite nice mixing the two together. So on here, you'll see I've got that leaf also mixed with the leaves that match it. And this is a card then that I've done to match. So this is just, again, come out really nice and I've stamped the happy birthday on this kind of white piece here this strip and then I've done three of the smaller flowers and then the bigger flower there and again just mixed all these little leaves in amongst it so that's just for inspiration there but the the one thing I want to show you is obviously how to use the stamps and also a really fun gift bag because yeah like I said I think you're going to like it so I'm just going to pop that all to one side and then I'll just show you how these stamps so if any of you aren't familiar with layered stamps basically you have this one here which is this one, so it's just a big, large stamp, just a full surface area stamp, and it will just give you this. Now you always stamp that one in the lightest color, the lightest shade that you have. And the easiest way to remember what kind of order you do the stamps is the, the larger the stamp, i.e. the surface area, it will be the first one, and then you'll go down and go down and go down. The thinnest stamp, which will be your detailed stamp, is the last one that you stick down. So you can see here, it's very very thin lines okay you can see then on this one it's got quite a thicker surface area and then with this one here it's just one big stamp that's it okay so that's kind of just quickly there the kind of order that you would do these stamps so I've stuck them I've stamped them there just so you can see beautiful detail now I and my way of using these layered stamps is I actually only ever use kind of base one and then the detail one. I never use the outline but the outlines are really good to create a nice coloured flower. So that is just that one there coloured in because that one there you could colour as well if you wanted to so you don't even have to use that one but you don't have it all kind of complete on the edge okay whereas this one you do but it does stamp really nicely and it's perfect to colour. So I will show you how to colour one because I've stamped one here. So Okay, so the way I like to use these and when I stamp is I like to die cut the actual image first. So this is that die cut rose, okay? And then using my stamp positioner, you don't have to use a stamp positioner and I'm not gonna use it in the way it's intended. I'm just using it for the sponge because you want a soft area. Now I do have this as well and I made this myself using the padding from when I received my Tim Holtz stamping positioner and that's the foam from that so again you can make them but you just want something that's got a soft spongy kind of surface and then with this piece here because you're going to be stamping on the whole area you can't use your magnets to hold it in place so I just get a little bit of sticky tape roll it around make sure you stick it on the right side and then just stick that one on there and that's not going to move now so next I can grab my stamp so first of all I'm just using those two so I'm not using my outline one so I can get rid of that one just using these two so this one here I want to stamp in my lightest color what I would say you want to do first of all is actually 
go through your inks and see what ones work well together. So I already went and checked and I've got this stamping up one here which is the powder pink and this one actually works really nicely with the stamping up Melon Mambo. So that's what's given me, because I've already gone and done some, that's what's given me that lovely look there. So get these both open and then because these are clear it again makes it very easy for you to see what you're doing but now what I'm saying is because I've cut that already I know I've already I can see straight away where I need to line that up you haven't got that large like if I stamp this on say this piece here and then try to line it up for me I struggle even if I'm using a stamping positioner because all that's going to do is just give me a good impression you've ultimately you've still got to make sure that you get this bang on so the first one I'm just going to hover over and just make sure I've got a nice even white border so that bit's easy and again because we've got that spongy surface it makes it much nicer and you get a good impression so now I can take that off and you can see that I've got that light kind of background so now I'm going to go in again because it's easy to line up it's very hard for you to get this not lined up okay there we go perfect so I'm really happy with that so now I'm going to remove that one get rid of that and I'm going to bring in this one with the detail so I'm stamping this one here now so again pop that on there and this is a real vibrant color it comes out really nice and this is a really easy one to line up I always focus on these two pieces here so I can see them quite clearly on this one here so you just want to line that up, I might get my head in the way, and what I do is I just bend it down slightly on an angle and do a test, and I can see there I could afford to go up a little bit higher. So now I put stamp that down, and lift, and there, I've got that perfect. Doing it this way for me is always a winner, it's very very hard for you to not line it up because I don't know, I don't know what it is, I think it's just because your eyes are just focusing on this small area, whereas, yeah, when you're working on a larger surface or you've stamped it, yeah, I just find it harder, that for me is easy. So there you have it, so that is, for me, how you do it, and then if you did want to add the out outline one, then you again, you would just line that one up over the top, okay? But like I said, I prefer to use these with just the two colours. I don't know what it is, I just think they look, for me, it's more my kind of style. So that's just a little insight into using the stamps. Now I want to show you how to use them and make a really fun gift bag. So I've already gone ahead and done one half and this is what we're going to end up creating. So this is one half of the gift bag and these here are actually all cut from the gift bag, the top of it. So if I flip it over, you see it's all joined and then I've stuck these three which are 3D which I've already done but I'm going to show you how to do this piece here. So you want two pieces that are eight and a quarter by eleven and three quarters so this is the default A4 size. If you don't have A4 then you need it to still be eight and a quarter but if yours is 11 inches and it'll just be a slightly shorter bag you can still do this with no problems. So you want two pieces and then on one of them you want to score, well on both you want to score at three along the long side but also if you want it to fold flat on one of them you want to score at four and a half as well okay so both at three and then one of them at four and a half so that one I showed you just now I've already scored at four and a half because that's going to be the back this one is going to be the front and the one that we're going to stamp on then you also want two pieces for your sides and these are four by nine and three quarters and again along the nine and three quarter side you want to score both of them at three and if you're folding them flat, if you're folding the bag flat, you want to score both at four and a half, okay? And then rotate it and you want to score at half an inch and at three and a half. And then also at two, just down to that first score line, okay? Which would have been the four and a half inch one. So you can see there where I've just scored down to that one. You want to do that on both pieces. Then this is the one that you're going to stamp on. So this is the one where you've only got the one score line, which is that three inch score line. So at the very top here is where we're going to do our stamping. Now I'm going to do all the stamping without my stamping platform, but I am going to use the foam from inside. Okay, so just to take that out. Now I know that this particular rose, I can stamp along here four times. Okay, so I've got my really manky cloth here. Does anybody else have a really dirty, well I say dirty, I rinse it, but it's always stained. And I'm just going to take the colour off that, even though I'm going to be inking it up again. 
and then I'm just going to wet this one just to clean my stamps off. Okay, first of all, we want to stamp our blocked colour along the top. So I'm just going to ink this up because I'm going to go over it in a few times. Now you also want to remember which kind of way your stamp goes. So those two larger bits that I always follow here is actually the bottom of the flower because it goes up this way. So you can have it kind of different angles but I want to make sure that those two bits stay towards the bottom. So that way around. And then I'm just going to go in and you basically want to get it as far to the top as possible and to the left hand side here because we're going to cut very carefully around this and because it's a really simple design to cut yeah it's just going to be easy so I'm going to go over this twice and then I'm going to do it again next to it and you want to try and get them as close as possible so this time but I want to change kind of the orientation just slightly but each time you want to make sure you get it as close to the top as possible okay I've caught it a little bit there but that's all going to get covered so I'm not too worried and then again, so you just want to continue that, just changing the orientation ever so slightly. Of course you can do this with any stamps, it doesn't have to be layered stamps at all. But um, I'm just, you know, showing you just how well these work. So that's that one all clean. And now I'm going to bring in the detail. didn't clean that from last time, so let me just wipe that one down. Okay, so again, ink this up. And stamp that one down. Just hold it there for a few seconds just to let the ink absorb into the paper. There you go. So you can see that I've lifted just a little bit but it still kind of works. Okay so that's that all done. Then with one of your side pieces here if you just fold and burnish all of the score lines because this one's going to fold flat what we need to do is just add in a couple of more score lines so where that middle score line joins to this one here, you just want to score across like so, creating a triangle within that rectangle. So if I just do this and then show you, again those of you that are regular to the channel will have done this lots of times, so you can see now I've just created this triangle within here. So you're just going down, so here's that rectangle and from the bottom of that score line you're just scoring across. Okay. Then we just need to cut up from the bottom up to the bottom corner of the triangle on each side. So you're just removing these pieces here, that one and that one. And then if you take kind of wedges off of this as well, because this is now going to be our base tab or our sides really, but it is the base. So I'm just going to remove that and then also take a couple of wedges off of the bottoms of the tabs here on the side and also on the top. Okay like so and then if you just work that middle score line in so these should be mountains on the outside that should be a valley and then you just want to fold along the two triangle pieces there. Okay and then if you just sit this underneath so that this score line lines up with the bottom score line here and wherever it reaches at the top is that's where you want to start cutting so I'm just going to add a little pencil mark here and um, you can do the same on this side so you're basically making any shape gift bag really you want in terms of the detail at the top so just put a little pencil mark there and there and now that means that's where I can start cutting so I'm going to go in from that pencil mark and then kind of start to join the shape of the rose and just try and give myself the same kind of white border this is about one eighth of an inch and I'm just going to go around now and you're basically fussy cutting your image And then when you get to the other end you just want to join it back up with that other pencil mark. Now you have this really cool top of your gift bag and the idea for this has come from that puffin card that I'd done where I it was um, any shaped card you wanted and this is how you do it and I just think it's such a great yeah technique really really fun. 
Now, obviously, if you don't want a fussy cut and you don't want to do that, then you can, if you imagine this is the top, you can just stick, you know, your flowers along the top and you could still get a very similar look. It's just you would see, obviously, you know, the join like that on the back. But that's not the end of the world. So there is still other ways to do this if you, you know, don't want to do all of this. Now I have already gone ahead and cut all of these and they are going to just be on foam adhesive just kind of coming down from each of the other roses along the top here. So kind of like that. Now I want to kind of recreate as much as possible this one here. Okay, so you can see what I've done there. So once I add in the green leaves and stuff. So I've gone ahead and stamped all the leaves. You stamp these exactly the same way in terms of layering. So I've done the base colour in a green and then I just stamped the detail over the top. And then I've also gone ahead and just cut a load of those other leaves which I like just to kind of fill it all up really and fill in any gaps. And the easiest way to get extras to match what you've already done is the dark colour of this green is the same green on these and I just got some white cardstock and just bring that all down a bit I just got white cardstock and just coloured the cardstock all over in this colour and then die cut the leaves so everything matches and ties in together okay so I've just got some foam here and like I said I'm just going to stick each of these down okay and then I'm just going to start adding in these leaves here so just with a little bit of glue and just kind of start filling any kind of gaps really where there's like white areas. Okay, so that's that now all finished. Next I'm going to bring in my side piece here and I'm going to stick this with some red tape and a little bit of wet glue just so I can get an instant kind of seal. So I'm just going to run that along and I'm just going to add another little bit of glue over the top and on that part where I didn't stick any. Okay, I'm going to stick this one on this side. Make sure you stick them both down on the same side. So line it up with the base there and then there's my other one already done. So they need to both look exactly the same. Next I'm going to add Again, some tape along this one. And then again, we want to stick this one. Always focusing on the base, make sure that that lines up first and then everything else will fall into place. Fold everything over and then you want to add glue now to your last tab. And then that one you want to fold in and then this one over the top and they should perfectly line up like so and because you've already folded in those side pieces but look how cute this looks i absolutely love it okay and then for the back piece you want to where you've got your score line here fold that one down first and then i'm just going to add some glue that one and then the last one because this is the front so this one just looks nicer if you fold it down last so I'm going to turn it up on its side and you can just go in with your ruler make sure it's all stuck down. There you have your gift bag so you should now just push in the tops of the triangles on each side and bring the back down and it will all just fold flat like so. And it's from here that you can now do your hole punches for your ribbon. Okay so I've got some handles so I'm just going to bring in my cropper dial and just roughly see because obviously I want them to be on the flowers I'm probably going to have to go in there but I'm going to try and see if I can kind of hide them under the leaves like so so I'm going to do one in here like that in fact I need the bigger hole so I'll go over that again there we go And then just measure. So I'm coming in at from the very edge, it's about two and three eighths of an inch. So, but it's entirely up to you. So, two and three eighths. So, I'm looking, yeah, I'm gonna have to come in a little bit more on this one just to get it roughly in the same place. Okay, I'm happy with that. 
and now I can just feed through my handles. There we go, and there's the back. And that to me is a beautiful gift bag. I absolutely love this this kind of style, and it's something I've just yeah come across by complete accident and I love it. So there is your gift bag and then you have your beautiful matching birthday card and a gift tag to go on top of this. So how beautiful is that going to look hanging or the smaller one here? They all look so nice. I can't wait to give this to somebody. So yeah, I hope this has inspired you. It's an absolutely gorgeous set, it really is. And I just think it's nice to really see just how much you can do with just one stamp and die set. So I'm so pleased I chose this one. Like I said, I will share something with this one. I've got a couple of ideas, so just need to play around with it. But um, yeah, hope it's inspired you. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.